switch is on. Okay, Victor. Landing rocket arm switch is on. Here comes the throttle. Circuit breakers in. We have separation. Hi there, folks. How you doing? Um, I thought I'd just make a quick video. Uh, just to see what everyone thought of the new A890 R now that it's finally been launched. Feels like we've been waiting forever, but I kind of see why they did take so long. Uh, obviously, Euro 6 was a big deal for KTM and well for most of the bike manufacturers. Um, it's fast approaching, so there was no point of pointing them putting out a model that was going to be obsolete. So. They kind of held on and aimed for that. Uh, hence the capacity hike uh, up to 890 from 790. So what were my first impressions, or what were yours anyway? Mine, when I first saw the bike, I thought, oh, it doesn't look like they've done much at all. I, I was expecting like a MotoGP paint job, very similar to that lovely new paint job they've got in the 1290R. I thought they would do something like that. Um, okay, we finally got some orange wheels, <laughs> but uh, I'm not I'm not super keen on the white on it. Um, I think it it may look better in the flesh. I don't want to get down on it, but yeah, my my initial impression was I didn't think it stood out enough. Uh, but at the moment, it's not my favourite colour, and hopefully they might even have a second colour waiting in the wings as an option. But generally, when people put out R versions. Um, the one it obvious when you see it, well that's the R, you can only get it in that colour, can't you? So, other than that, the meh paint job, everything else I'm pretty impressed with. Um, the uh, main thing I suppose is that 100cc giving us another 15 brake horsepower and I kind of thought when I heard the rumours about there being an extra 15 horsepower that the bike's going to be a bit heavier and probably going to have a massive catalytic converter on it so it's going to be heavier uh, so that's going to kind of negate it but they've still managed to lop off three kilograms somewhere probably mostly in metal shavings while they've been boring it out <laughs> and the other changes I believe apart from that is like they've changed the profile in the cam make it a bit more revvy so again, the height and capacity, I thought they would low, lower the rev limit, but it's increased by 500 RPM, so that's another good thing. Because uh, I do like the revenue of the 790, and I kind of thought it's totally going to change it. So it's still there, and as well as that, they've changed the riding position. I believe the new bars are kind of got a lower uh, profile on them, and they've been canted forward a bit more. So you're over the front of the bike much more than you are in a 790. As well as that, I believe they've raised slightly raised the pegs and put them further back. So again, it's going to put you, excuse me, uh, more into that sort of super sport riding position. I'm hoping, um, but not maybe not quite as extreme as that. But it's getting there. Everything's aimed at the track, so I can kind of see what they're doing there. All these little things are there for a reason. Uh, they've bunged on some nice WP adjustable suspension and some nice sticky um, Michelin tyres as well instead of the Maxis. Um, the Maxis weren't all that good were they? They're fine for running your bike in but it's, well, get them off as soon as you get a chance. Um, and they've put on some nice uh, Brembo Stylima brakes. Now, I. I've never actually felt that my bike on the road has needed better brakes. For the road they're spot on, but as I said before, I haven't done any track days on it. Uh, so I can't vouch for how long they would last or how good they would feel on the track. So these Brembo's from what everyone's saying are amazing. So I'll just go with the flow there. I don't know anything about them. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so this bike is obviously aimed at the track um, with your weight loss, increasing power, adjustable suspension, sticky tyres and your canted forward uh, steering and slightly steeper um, steering rake I believe as well. So 
all pointing to an even lighter, faster turning bike than we've already got. Um, the other thing I noticed they've changed as well were the standard mirrors. They look way better than those horrible rubberized ones that we got on the 790. They're more like the ones on the uh, 1290. Uh, much better looking. Um, so no need to rush out and get bar ends straight away. You could live with them for a while. Um, I don't know if I'd rush out and upgrade. I've got another, at least another year with Duke yet, with, uh, sorry, with Moose yet. Um, this will be a, a year in April, May, if I was going to change, I would think about changing. And I've still a couple of bits and bobs I want to do them yet, so there's no real rush. Um, but when I'm down getting my service done next year, early next year, then hopefully Drysdales will have one in and I can take it out to try. Uh, <laughs> I'm saying I don't want to change, but I know 15 horsepower is going to go, make me go, oh, actually, I need this. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes anyway. Uh, the only other bike that I saw that was in my budget and sort of looked like a viable sort of option uh, if I was sort of swapping would be, and it is just a concept just now, although it looks like it is ready to go, it is the Aprilia 660 Tuono. Um, I spoke about the 660 Super Sport before in a previous vlog. Um, and it was a bike I was keen on uh, seeing put into production. They've obviously they've officially launched that now. So this year's Eichma bike for the for Aprilia was the Tuono version, which pretty much looking at it was ready to go. It just needs number plates on it, and that's it. Uh, I dare say they're going to kind of keep it, hold it back for another year until next year. Um, and just get these 660 Super Sports out the door first. So I uh, look forward to seeing what the journals make of the 660 Super Sport because obviously there's not much in it. Uh, the Chono, they, they don't usually change anything at all with the Chonos do they over the, over the big bikes. They just basically lob off some plastic fairings and put on some risers and that's you, you've got your Chono. So if it's a good bike then we'll know that in, the Chuono form it will be just as good if not better, probably better for the road as well. And it again is a another parallel, obviously down in CCs but still 100, 100 bhp is the rumour, which is quite a lot from a little 660 parallel twin, so interesting to find out how that sounds up against the 790, is it more screamy what the difference is in the note? and um, how revvy they've got it as well um, but to me it was just a beautiful looking bike it's got so many little sort of curves and lines and it very futuristic compared with the, the ktm duke both going to do the same job both good handling bikes but the ktm duke's like jeans and t-shirt and the, the little aprilia tuono uh, <laughs> Looks like it's turned up in an Amani suit, you know. They're, that, they're, they're so different. Um, yeah, so looking forward to having a, a read about that in future, and hopefully some videos on YouTube at some point soon as well. Um, is it something you'd be interested in, or are you sort of guys looking at other bikes? I mean, there are plenty of big bikes out there. They've got the V4 Ducati V4 Street Fighter and a couple of MV Augustas that are gorgeous to look at and then you've got the obviously the 1290 Duke which is a brand new bike as well and then there's that um, ZH2, the Kawasaki ZH2 which is whew, maybe not to me not a pretty bike but that's a lot of bang for your buck there you know it's like a good four or five grand or more cheaper than all of the other big sort of street fighters so 200 brake for I think they're saying 16,000 odd compared to the Ducati if you want the S is the other side of 20 it's a, it's a big difference in price for probably point something of a second around the track so it'll be interesting to see how those uh, reviews go down 
Okay, one last thing before I go. Has anybody out there had any issues with uh, moisture inside their TFD displays? Um, my mucker called your bike or over on his channel. He used to have a 790, but he's now got a 790 Adventure. And he's on to display number four, I believe. He's had moisture in the air, which when he takes out the bike, as the bike warms up, just gets worse and worse and ends up with these little droplets inside the display. Um, no issues warranty wise, KTM have been great, they've replaced it every time without a quibble but you know he's just wondering if, if it's model specific or is anyone else out there having the same issue so if you can let us know either way, it'd be interesting to see how they can get one right and the other wrong. So I, I kind of think there's probably other people out there who have got that same issue regardless of whether it's the Adventure or just the normal 790. Um, any comments guys, greatly appreciated. Let me know your thoughts on the new 890 and um, what you thought of it. Is it something you want to upgrade to? Are you happy where you are for road riding? Do you need it to be the R version or is it just that usual little boy thing, bigger is better? <laughs> and just let me know in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you.